So I was wrong about the Toronto Raptors. It's only right to give flack to the same players I give credit to, and quite frankly, we've seen several players regress in about every single area for this team, something that's both on the development and coaching staff, plus of course a few individual players. The Toronto Raptors are all around just completely depressing, as who knows where marquee free agent pickup Otto Porter Jr. went. But from the failed leadership of self-perceived $200 million man Fred Van Vliet to the blatant failure from the overconfident head coach Nick Nurse who's in over his head in about every way possible, failing to play his young guys through their mistakes, is terrible with his rotations, can't manage a locker room, and can't internally develop his players like previous head coach Dwayne Casey could, not to mention the seemingly complacent front office led by Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster who've had their hands in their lap since winning a title, this once seeming to be flawless this Raptor organization is suddenly in deep, deep trouble. On a rare positive note, while my boy Pascal Siakam did just have an off night against New York, this man's having an all-NBA caliber year for a second straight time, but it's being wasted in a losing season. Siakam's displayed improved leadership as opposed to Van Vliet, who seemingly only cares about his stats, and Siakam's displayed a willingness to let the game come to him, being fully committed to getting the score in his team's favor. Other players on this roster outside of Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi, who should be this team's first and second options, need to realize who they are, who they want to be for this team. More importantly, the rest of the roster needs to from now on be fully committed to contributing to this team's chemistry because the vibes are at an all-time low right now, which is tough from a fan's perspective, I'm not going to lie. Basketball-wise, the play sets being ran by Nick Nurse are bland, predictable, and therefore easily sought out by opponents. They're not getting nearly enough high-low, swing-swing, or off-ball action. Also, it seems that guys don't know their roles, which makes things the toughest. As a fan of this team, I haven't been to a Raptor game in about a month now, as being around this roster, I'm not going to lie, just isn't something I'm willing to spend money on, as there's other flat-out better basketball to watch that doesn't cost me the prices that MLSE charges. Bobby, Masai, and Nick better start coming together and getting their priorities straight, and if those are centered around scooting back for Scoot or storing up the drama for Wembenyama, then so be it. But right now, something's got to give because this mess isn't going to cut it. ROY Scotty Barnes, as much as it pains me to say this because I still love this kid and believe in him, don't get me wrong about that, but he's resembling sophomore Michael Carter Williams in terms of his trajectory, which is very disappointing for a player who can resemble Giannis when he's fearlessly attacking downhill. Defenses are guarding Barnes like they do Ben Simmons, and if Scott's going to be a DHO, Draymond Green type role man who strictly operates in the dunker spot, plus can defend and occasionally knock down spot ups like Sean Marion, then I'm all for it. Looking at it from a bird's eye view, what Barnes can't be doing is settling for the most inefficient shot in the modern NBA, and a shot he's not necessarily good at, that being pull up mid rangers. I'm still a big fan of Scotty's persona on and off the court. I think he's hilarious and a great guy, but he just needs to clear his mind and strictly focus on what's happening between the lines and let everything else take care of itself. For Barnes, he just has to compare the on-court reps he does to grinding to level 40 on 2K or grinding for his badges. Personally, I quit the addictive never developing 2K a while back, and my life's been much more enjoyable without that online gaming, which mostly consists of just boredly sitting around waiting for games at the park if you're a 2K gamer. Anyways, there's still a ton of upside for Barnes, but from the front office to more so the coaching staff, this team must be more committed as a whole to getting the most out of 2021's number 4 four overall draft pick as they possibly can. Barnes needs to become this team's first priority, and yes, they already didn't trade him for Kevin Durant, but I'm talking about the coaching staff spending real time to form a bond and truly commit to developing him. Rico Hines was thought of to be that guy, maybe it just isn't the right fit, but aside from that, let's all be realistic and look ourselves in the mirror about Toronto this year. They've very slowly transitioned out of their championship winning era in terms of their personnel. Of course, they still have the same coach in nurse, but let's face it, this Raptor group is doing nothing this year. They're doing nothing next year. Pascal Siakam deserves to spend his best years on a winning team. The same thing goes for the slightly younger OG Ananobi. The front office needs to stop being concerned about getting fleeced and pull the trigger on some type of deal before the damage on Scotty's development goes too far. 
Nick Nurse was hired for his game planning. Of course, the box and one was crucial on Steph in the finals, and the chess match with Brad Stevens the next year in the conference semis, but Nick's strength has never been connecting a locker room like he's prime Phil Jackson or something. If you're not going to have the greatest relationship with all your players, or even make the right substitutions in terms of overplaying the starters an extreme amount, what they brought you here for in your game planning at least has to be decent. That's been the opposite of the case with Nurse, who constantly looks to shut down individual players as opposed to looking at the bigger picture and just trying to win the game in general. This means having his starters expend even more energy than they already are by overhelping and heavy blitzing in scenarios that don't see put, leading to wide open three-pointers one after the other. Regarding the bad rotations, proof of that is the fact that the organization just signed a potentially solid three-point shooting rookie free agent, Joe Wieskamp, but every Raptor fan already knows that he's just going to sit on the bench for 10 days before being waived because Nick's not going to play him. Regarding his poor managing of the locker room, proof of that is, do you ever see Nick talking to any one of his players intensely on the sidelines, aside from Van Vliet? The answer to that is a resounding no, and despite having the claim to fame of mythically stopping Steph Curry who had no help around him without Clay and Durant, Nurse deserves to be held accountable for not being as close with his guys as he should be. The media members who stand next to him every day won't tell you this, I get that, but I will for their sake. No one looks up to Nick Nurse. No one wants to learn from Nick. Most importantly on this team, no one wants to play for Nick. I don't think they relate to this old guy at all. I can almost guarantee firing him and hiring D flow would solve every one of our problems, but we move. Making things short and sour, behind every great organization is a great fan base. And to be straight with you, MLSE overpricing their tickets has left every passionate ball fan with the inability to afford them. Haven't been to so many games though, where the Raptors are 7-3 by the way. To be fair, I haven't been in a month, but I can tell you the energy in Scotiabank Arena's 100 level is absolutely awful. I actually feel bad when I don't go to games because every other petrified Canadian's quivering in their seat, wondering if anyone's going to judge them if they yell to their favorite player. Point is, let's be better as fans so we can expect more from our players and so our players want to be better. Be loud if you go to a game and I can promise you no one is judging. They can go to a library if they want peace and quiet. Anyways, rant over. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.